I'm so excited to be here. I didn't think the day was going to come. I didn't think it was going to happen. Whoa, 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 blur. Calm down. I'm coming. What are you talking about? Uh, you're talking a little too fast. People won't be able to understand what you're saying. I'll talk slower then. Thank you. Now, you said you're excited. What are you excited about? I'm excited to be here for the latest Gatbot 2 review. Well, that's great, because you're going to be the focus of the latest Gatbot 2 re review. I didn't think this day was ever going to happen. Why wouldn't I review you? After all, you're about ready to be re-released in an upcoming Platinum Edition set. What a perfect time to take a look at Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Blur. Welcome back to the channel, folks. I am Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot, and I, uh, I thank you for dropping by for a visit. I thank you for uh, liking and commenting and subscribing and all that good stuff. I would appreciate it if you take a look at Machinery of Man, if you would take a look at The Everything Factor, and check me out across social media. And today, we are going to look at the second uh, figure that will be included in the upcoming um, Platinum Edition box set. This is not the Platinum Edition version. Obviously, this is the retail version of Generations Deluxe Class Blur. few years old. Um, and uh, it's great to see this mold being used again. We've also had a lot of talk about the Titans Return blur that's going to be coming out. And that looks absolutely beautiful. So, how does this guy stack up? You know, should you get the, the Platinum set so that you have this mold? Um, do you already have Drift, uh, which is what this mold is modeled after? Um, should you hold out and get the other blur? What should you do? Well, let's look at this guy and just, you know, see how he stacks up, and then you can decide for yourself. First of all, as far as the figures that will be, uh, you know, included in that box set, you know, we've already looked at Cup, now we're about to look at Blur. How did these guys stack up with a modern day deluxe? Well, you know, here is Off-Road. You know, there's Off-Road right there. If anything, they're a bit bigger, uh, you know. No shock there. So let's get off-road out of the way, and let's get Cup out of the way, and we will focus squarely on the bot of the hour, Blur. Um, okay, so we're going to look at them with paint apps, posability, playability, and transformation. Again, when this mold was originally released, and based on reviews I've seen, they always show him being transformed from vehicle mode to bot mode. That's a great thing to do, uh, because he originally came in package in... Vehicle mode. It looks like in the upcoming uh, box that he's going to be uh, starting out in, in robot mode, so I'm going to show the transformation from this mode first. Um, paint apps, posability, playability, and transformation. Okay, so the paint apps, I, I really have to spend a little bit of time on here. I, I like the, the light blue, the dark blue. I love the interplay. I think it's great. Uh, you know, it... It's certainly a passable blur. Uh, I think it might be an IDW-inspired blur, I think. Uh, it's a passable blur. It's an all-right blur. The head sculpt, I'm not struck on it. It's okay, but it's not real blur-esque. Uh, some people leave the, you know, shoulder pieces up like this and say that gives them more of a blur-looking arm. I think that that's probably true. I think it does give it more of a blur-looking arm, but look how high his shoulders are compared to his head. And if you want to move his arm out, you're going to smack him in the head with his own shoulder. So I still, um, as you know, people tend to do with the drift version of this mold, I still fold him to the back of the arm, and it gives him, you know, a little more leeway for his shoulders to come up. Uh, truth is... They're kind of tight anyway. So, for paint apps, for version of Blur, I'll give him, I'll give him an eight. I'll give him an eight because I, I really want to to like this mold, like this Blur. So I'll give him an eight. Uh, the Titans Returns Blur that's coming out. Uh, the you know the. Um, I guess it's Unite Warriors. I don't know what 
what the Japanese version is being called. Uh, those guys are, you know, a nine and a half, a ten for paint apps. So this guy is a little bit lower for paint apps. Not because things aren't placed right, but because the mold itself is more of a stylized idea of blur. Um, and, you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, he does have a gun in here and a gun in here, sort of in holsters. They're little handguns. And uh, I'm saying handguns, but they're actually quite large. Um, you know, Blur is really kind of being made out to be an assassin here. And you see the, the gap in, you know, right here. You just take it handle facing up, folks, and you stick it in there and it won't fall out. He also comes with this rather huge sniper rifle. Uh, I believe a lot of people try to give it to Perceptor, maybe? Or maybe it's cops that they try to give to Perceptor. Uh, huge, huge uh, sniper rifle. Um, and with this thin section right here, it pegs in up right here on his back. Uh, so it actually pegs in with quite not, uh I can get it there. You go. Quite nice storage, uh, and I really don't find it obtrusive at all. Um, so yeah, paint apps. Like I said, I'm being generous. I'm giving him an eight. You know what? Because of the mold, honestly, let's knock it back to a seven. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic here. Um, Poseability, playability. He rolls great in car mode. Um, in bot mode, the head goes. Does it go left and right? If you don't have the, the gun, the sniper rifle back there, you're probably going to get some more head movement. The sniper rifle there, or do you get more head movement? Uh, a little left, a little right. He can look down and he can look up a little bit. So not a lot of head movement. Um, put that sniper rifle back. The shoulders all, I already talked about. I mean, they can go out quite a, you know, quite a nice bit, but you have to realize that you're bringing the shoulders right up by the head. Um, the biceps, they, they do swivel. Uh, there is a, a really beautiful deep elbow bend, but that's really a part of transformation. Uh, the wrists also swivel. Uh, so, you know, nice articulation there. Uh, no waist joint. Uh, the legs, they, you know, can do the splits quite well. Um, thigh swivel. There is a, you know, 90 degree elbow or knee. Uh, and the feet, I guess they can do this. I don't know. Okay, the feet can do that. Um, so overall, posability, playability, because of a few things knocking into each other, um, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a gain about a seven. About a seven for posability, playability, maybe seven and a half. So we'll say paint apps and sculpt a seven. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's reasonable. We're saying posability, playability, about a seven. Let's get into the transformation for this guy and see how he does. Um, where do we actually begin with this guy? Well, Let's fold his arms up and in. And fold this arm up and in. Because we have to. We can take those shoulder bits and put them like that and take this shoulder bit and put it up like so. And you can kind of see how the arms are going to go up over the front. Take the chest piece and pull that off just so we kind of have room to work. You might even want to take the sniper rifle off of the back for now. Bring the shoulders up. And then these pieces right here, they hinge out to become the center of the hood. And we'll hinge this one out and it too will become the center of the hood. And there's a series of, you know, interlocking tabs here. And we should be able to put those together just like so. And we take this, you know, windshield and we bring it in right there. Um, for the, what will we do next? For the, the holsters on his sides, you can flip out a window. And for the holster on the other side, you can also flip out a window. 
And of course, they're going to become the doors. Now we need to deal with the uh, back of this guy. Um, you start by bringing the foot. Let's see if I can show this. Okay, there's a, like a hinge in here. And you want to kind of straighten out the foot so that it looks like this because this hinge is going to hinge all the way up. Or it should hinge all the way up. Why mine isn't doing it right now, I am unsure. Oh, sorry, you need to take it all the way forward. Okay, so the hinge didn't hinge all the way up because you need to take the foot all the way forward so that it can come down around this edge. Just like so. And I'll show that on the other side. We take the foot, we bring it out, we hinge it really all the way forward so that it gets down around this edge here. And we bring it up just like so. We take the legs and we squeeze the legs together just like so. And now, really, all you need to do is fold them up. And when you fold them up, of course, you want the feet to, you know, go in underneath the roof section. Uh, you might have to fiddle with this a little bit in order to work it out. Why is this not working for me? Usually this works pretty easily. Pretty easily. Um, Take the feet there, like that. There, there we go. That was just me uh, finagling it a bit uh, and fiddling with it a bit. Anyway, there you go. You just bring the feet up and you fold the feet in under that hood piece. Uh, for some reason, I had the legs back too far. It looks more complicated than I, or yeah, it looked more complicated than it actually is. Truth is, usually this piece just flips up no problem and you just fit this on over it. Uh, that was just because I had the thighs here pushed back uh, from the hips a little bit too far. Um, so that's just a little, you know, little readjustment. Then you take these, what were holsters on the sides, and you bring them in on this side and you bring it in on this side and you give everything a, a nice squeeze. You take the sniper rifle and you stick it back down in that same slot where it was on his back before except now it's going to be under the car. It kind of comes out as his exhaust and here is blur in car mode. It again is an earth stylized version. It is not the blur we all know and love though the colors are quite good on it. The transformation, um, honestly, the transformation for this guy is, I'm going to say the transformation is about uh, an eight and a half. Even though I just fiddled with his legs a little bit, that was my own fault. That was not a fault of the transformation. So it's about an eight and a half. Overall, Blur, I think it's safe to say that Blur is, uh, you know, a figure that is eight to an eight and a half. If you can get him in the Platinum set, hey, He's worth it. Get him. He's a great, solid figure. Fun, interesting, different transformation. Um, and I think you'll enjoy him. Should you get this version over the new, uh, you know, impending Titans Returns version? I don't know. We don't have that version yet. That looks impressive. That looks really impressive. I do not like the fact that he is going to be a headmaster. If anything, he should be a target master. But... For now, let's reserve judgment and wait to see what it's like when it comes. But is this guy worth getting? Yeah, definitely. I said that if you can get your hands on Cup, you should add him to your collection, whether you get this version or whether you wait and get him as part of the Platinum set. Same goes for Blur. Either get this version in the Platinum set and be very happy with him and all of his armament, or wait and see what Titans Returns has. The call is yours. For me, I think I'm going to stick with this version. Anyway, that's it for our second figure from that upcoming box set. Uh, next, we will move on 
and we will have a look at another uh, figure that was absolutely stellar. So stick around, and uh, I will see you the next time we have a visit right here inside the videos. Thanks for watching.